I am ZW and in this video I will show you the power of the largest 8K resin printer, the Frozen Mega 8K. Through the creation of Mrs. Potato Head which only took 9 hours to print, that's right, every single accessories. With the help of this Mrs. Potato Head from Play School, it's not really accurate in many ways but I guess it's good enough as a background character. I have over 30 accessories and I deserve more respect! Fine, enough said, we are going to salvage some parts to make her more accurate. I like the heels, the hat should give me a rough idea of the size, and lastly, the flower. Throw them in front of our trusty Revel Point Pop 2 scanner and after a quick spin, we have ourselves some nice digital scans that I can import into ZBrush for editing. Lucky for us, we already have a really nice 3D model of Mr. Potato Head that we made in a previous video. I started with the heels by separating them like they should be in the first place, which exposes the insides but by duplicating it and mirroring it over, we can combine them together into a complete heel. But it's too thin to be printed so we gotta thicken it. What's left is to clean the rough scan and kinda target squish it a little, you know, just regular sculpting terms. This is not shoemaking 101 and I don't want to bore you with the details but basically we separated the heels in three parts in order to ensure the sharp flat edges. With the heels done, we are almost 50% ready because the other accessories are pretty similar to Mr. Potatoes. The arms are exactly the same, the ears are just a little smaller and dirtier because of her ear booger. Be careful with the nose job because we don't want it to fall off and don't inject too much lip filler or it will explode. I borrowed the lower lip and flattened it into her pearly whites and for her eyes, we can duplicate them and slice the bottom off to make eyelids. However, the angle of slicing is important as we don't want her to be too sad we just want the right amount of derpiness, about 20 degrees according to my professional opinion. And now it's time for magic. I'm going to transform the eyelids into eyebrows, again with the squishing and the pulling into a wavy seductive brow. But that's not it, the eyebrow can also turn into eyelashes by making them smaller and duplicating them 3 times. That's why I love digital sculpting so much, not just because I'm bad at traditional sculpting, I'm also a really lazy person. And finally, the much dreaded flower head. Ugh, it's going to be the most work out of everything, and when I tried using the head scan, it went a little crazy, so I had no choice but to try and modify our Mr. Potato's head by adjusting the edges down and pulling the front up to accommodate the flower. As for the yellow band around the head, I merely threw in a donut looking circle and it's as simple as that. The hard part would be the flower, which was made a little easier with a 3D scan where I stole a petal, made sure it's good, then I duplicated it 5 times. Magic! The center is made with a sphere which I vandalized with some grid patterns. And to finish it off, I inserted a few more spheres for the pimples on top of the head. Duplicated them 4 more times and we are ready. oh, what the? After I cut them off, Mrs. Potato Head is ready. I separated them into parts which is the same process as Mr. Potatoes so you can check it out in that video. 3D printing preparations are mostly the same. I still hollow the parts to save on resin even though Frozen's resin is a lot more affordable. And I'm extra excited this time because I want to know if the Mega 8K's build plate is big enough to print every single accessories. And after a quick layout in Lychee Slicer, I am pleasantly surprised. Because if you remember, I had to print 3 days for Mr. Potato as my previous printer was too small. As for generating support, I'm still not certain if I could use light support for medium sized prints so to be safe. I went for medium support. Then to be extra safe, I went in layer by layer to add in more support. Like here for example, where it seems to be floating in midair, I would add a support just in case. And you will have to do it for all 16 parts. But if you think about it, you can actually just duplicate one part, then mirror it since the left and right part are exactly the same. The laziness makes you work smarter. 
I slice them with Cheeto Box and we can finally print. I mean you already saw the uh, successful prints at the start of the video and needless to say, I was extremely proud of it. Even the print remover was easy, just stick your tool into the holes and they pop right out. Due to the limited space in this printing room that was originally a washroom, I have to throw this print into a bucket off camera. It is filled with IPA to clean the uncured resin of the print. And when all of them have been soaked, we will cure them again under UV light in my little DIY UV box that unfortunately could not contain all of the prints but no bother, we can do two rounds of curing. And this is the printing result. Only a small failure at the top due to the lack of support but the rest is printed out nicely. Look at the flower details and the potato skin details. One thing about printing at 50 microns is that you will get visible stepping lines regardless of which printer you use. That is just the nature of printing and that's when we get to have fun and send them smooth. And that's not the focus now though. We have to face the consequences of using medium support as it is leaving a lot of artifacts behind and I can't believe what I'm about to say but I can't wait to send this. I didn't even bother removing the supports for the rest because I need to know if sending it would remove the potato skin texture or could we get away with it. After a few tries between priming and sanding, I think it works. It's not very visible and I can live with it, which says a lot. So I went on to remove the remaining supports, real fun stuff that I would love to do full time. So thank you guys for watching this video and most importantly, our lovely supporters who are helping me inch a little closer towards my dreams. Our coffee crew, we have a new member Yuan who also gifted a year worth of coffee gold subscription that is beyond generous. Thank you so so much. We also have a new Patreon, Moby for the sandpaper tier. Welcome! And finally, we got our first two YouTube members, Amanda and Astro. Do you know that I'm working on Bo Peep's Lamp? Well, if you'd like to keep updated about future projects, feel free to join us and help keep this channel alive. And now we get to smoothing the prints themselves. Except, there isn't a smooth sailing project ever on this channel, and the eyes refused to enter the face. Words I never thought I would ever say in my life. Turns out the pack is slanted and it's a freaking oval instead of a circle. I think somehow, somewhere during the sculpting process, I accidentally modified it and now we get to have a little more sanding fun with our new favorite tool, the automatic sander. Sandy, that's her name. And she was introduced to me by a fellow YouTuber, Leona's Workshop. If you like GK stuff, you gotta follow her. I will take good care of Sandy and not abuse her, because clearly right now, we need our big guns. Say hi to Apollo. He's here to destroy, not smooth, and that's exactly what we need. We shaved down so much of the pack and finally got them both into the face. So goodbye Apollo, boy was I naive. The fact is, none of these packs were able to penetrate our potato and I suspect that during printing they kinda expanded ever so slightly, making the hole smaller and the pack bigger. And you know what that means. Hi again Apollo, I guess the time we saved from printing we made up with sanding. Of course it's my first time printing with this printer and there are ways to counter this issue like making the pack smaller and the hole bigger when preparing for printing. So I'm totally fine with it, we learn from our mistakes. And now that everyone is fitting in just nice, we are left with the hat, which would require hand sanding because of the details. And I just love how they look after they are smooth. Oh, don't look inside. Before we can paint, we gotta deal with the eyebrows, which will obviously be magnetic like we did for Mr. Potato. I was a little worried because her eyebrows are a lot thinner but fortunately our magnet is still within that thickness and we easily drilled and glued them in place. The colours is where I feel I will disappoint a lot of people because 
I looked everywhere and nobody is selling Mr. Potato skin tone. Alright, so we are back with the struggle of matching that weird ass orangey brownish color. I started with 5 drops of this orange, 2 of this sunny and 2 of the tan brown. It looks okay here, but in natural lighting, as my mom put it, it has the colors of diarrhea. The rest is straightforward, most of them are just one solid color like the arms, heels and nose. I fed the lips some blue tag to protect her teeth and applied her lipsticks accordingly, and it's not bad. After a quick touch up, it's good to go. After the orange on the head, I masked it to paint the yellow band because yellow is another colour that is hard to hand brush, together with the earrings of course. And they look great, masking tapes for the win. Similarly, masking the eyes, then applying the lavender eyeshadows, then it's just hand brushing black. And we can bring them all to life with our floor polish gloss to make them look like plastic toys. That's it folks, Mrs. Potato Head, fully printed with the Frozen Mega 8K. I am so glad we finally have a reliable big printer, which has opened up so many opportunities for more custom work. I think the overall design is quite on point, I just need to figure out the skin tone. And for all of you who want the purse, here, the purse from the Play School toy, which looks as accurate as it can be. Thank you all for watching, make sure to like and share this video to help out the channel and goodbye.